Hello everyone, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Newcastle Fans TV. Right, hello everyone, how are you doing? Right, I am joined by our fellow crew, Johnny Matthew. Oh, going very public now yeah, with formal names, Jonathan Matthew. Liam, what's your name so far? Leon? Uh, Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin, Benjamin it is, and so please let us know about Benjamin in the comments. Right, uh, we're going to talk about um, just about the owners. How is it going so far? Johnny, how is it? Early doors still. It's only been, what, six weeks? Yeah, very much early doors. And it has been a breath of fresh air to have new owners in, and it always will be. It didn't matter who the new owners were going to be. The fact that Mike Ashi left the football club, that was the biggest thing. I think they've implemented some fantastic little ideas in terms of just cleaning the stadium, which is a massive, massive thing for a lot of Newcastle well, fans. Just put in, it's just said that was it 38 million that was spent already. Yeah, that's, a, that's I think like um, like we we've only spent 40 million on Joe Linton. So I was about to say, it's yeah, a player. That's <laughs> a player. But um, little like the things that I liked was the fact like bring Gary Speed and Shea Given at the Hall of Fame. I thought that was. Just little things like that they didn't have to do straight away. But I think that was like, I think they would have had a, a little bit of an input on that. But I think being there is more important. Of course it is. And the fact that Mike Ashley's never probably been at any of these events or has never been uh, publicly said that he's been in these events as a, as a master state. And they've been to every single game yeah. as well. Yeah. Every single game you see Amanda Staley and Mia Dad and Jamie Rubin in particular. So that, that is fantastic. And look, we need wins. And I think I'm sure they want to see a win. But there's so much positivity around the place. It just needs the results on the pitch now to maybe go. Well, we'll spend a few more money on certain areas of the ground and maybe the training ground. And hopefully, they've got ideas already to how they're going to do that because the training ground for me needs a lot of investment, or you just get rid of it and build it somewhere else. Matt, is there any criticism of them so far? Maybe the Steve Bruce handling? Yeah. Is that the only thing that you would say? Personally, yeah. I mean, obviously that could have been handled better, but I do like the way that they're quite measured and they don't rush into anything. Um, you know, would have loved to see Steve Bruce gone on the same night that the takeover was announced. Um, but, you know, they, they stuck with him, they gave him his, his chance and he didn't take it. Um, could have handled that better, but I just, I like how patient they approach things. You know, we've still not got a director of football uh, come in because they, they clearly care about who they want to bring in. You know, they're taking the time to approach the right person. They did the same with the manager. You know, we, oh, it's going to be Emery. It's going to be this person, the other person. They took the time. They got the right man, hopefully. Fingers crossed, it's going to be the right man. They got the man they wanted for this club. And I think, personally, that's the best thing to come out of it. I wouldn't have too many criticism, criticisms of them so far. We'll wait for January transfer window. We'll see how that goes, because that could be the first real stumbling block for them. Liam, it's kind of the same question I asked you outside St. James's the other day. This whole speculation about a sporting slash director footballer coming in. Football, why do I keep saying footballer? <laughs> footballer, I'm still saying it, coming in. Um, do you like that model? Um, do, do we need that? It, it seems to work in all the top clubs. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Like, if you want to be a top club, you want to try and take as much responsibility away from the manager as possible, but still having him still having the overarching control of like, what players he signs. But I think if it's going to work, it's when it's got to work, really. Um, but I was listening to what Matt was saying. I completely disagree with you on the Bruce situation. Ooh, tell us why. I just think, right, all they're thinking is PR at the moment. They want to be seen as like this shining light of they're better than Ashley, they're better than like everybody else. So I think leaving Steve Bruce on 999 games was a, probably a sour note. So it's not like we're playing Norwich or beat Spurs, so we're expected to get beat. So that was just a throwaway game, in my opinion. They give him a thousand game and chop him. That's, that's all I, th I think. It's all going to be good PR at the minute, though, because yeah. they're not tested yet. Other yeah. Johnny, it's not. I think the January transfer window is the biggest test for on and off the pitch. It is. It is a massive test for the new owners. And look, Amanda Staley is that public figure. She is basically the face of this new takeover. If we're being honest, but you look at January and it's huge. It is yeah. really, really big in terms of where Newcastle are going to be in the immediate short term. Now, long term, like five, six, ten years down the line, we can look back at this these first few months and go, well, lucky they did this right, they did this wrong, but the heart's in the right place. 
yeah. I mean, that's what you've got to look at. The heart is in the right place in terms of where they want Newcastle to be. Just talking before um, about negativity, the only thing I would say in regards to the negativity was that the press are getting a lot of information. And I think Unai Emery was the perfect example in the sense of... Who's, it's like leaking. It's leaking very easily. I think if I was the new ownership, I would just kind of go, let's just hold it back a little bit until we know for certain. Now, I know sometimes sometimes that can't be helped. I do appreciate that, but I think there has to be a certain point where you go, do you know what? If we can do our best from our side of the story, then it will help us in the long run. But as fan channels, we want to know everything, you know? So it, it is difficult. They've got to try and, I think they've got to try and find that balance. But again, this is completely new to them in terms of running a football club and a, cl- and a football club that's just about in the Premier League. You know, this is completely new, it's completely foreign. And I, I suppose they're learning on the job a little bit. Two questions for you, Matt. Yasser al Rumian has been twice. Already that's more than Manchester City's owner. Is, does he and the PIF have the final say on everything? And secondly, Jimmy Rubin doesn't get much talked about. What's his role? Well, I mean, it remains to be seen. You know, he, he, there's a lot of press around him um, or, or them. Um, you know, I, I saw a tweet the other day. He went down to the, I think it was the food bank donation centre, and stuffing like handfuls of twenty pound notes into their um, their collection buckets. Which is fantastic. You know, we'd love to see owners giving back to the community. Be 50, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, there's a lot of names involved, in it. I'm you know still uncertain as to what the role of each person is. You know, you've got Stavely and her husband, and then do you think Stavely, she's running, she's the face? She's what's got, Jamie Rubin doing? Well, you think that he's kind of the business side of things, obviously. Um, a man I think I'm right in saying was just originally brought in as a broker um, between the, t- the parties as part of the deal uh, and she's become the face of, of the takeover and as the, of the ownership um, since I would, I'm no complaint to that completely but um, obviously Jamie, Jamie Rubin uh, the Rubin brothers successful businessmen um, investing in like the local area and stuff in the club I imagine they'll handle a lot of the business side of things the decisions that because it's been a QPR yeah well and didn't go too well from there unfortunately um, but yeah so he's coming in and he'll, he'll handle a lot of the business behind closed doors I imagine um, but you know as fans that we, we're not quite sure what goes on behind the behind closed doors now, I asked Liam this you might have seen the video would you like to say club legends come back as well as a short term thing Liam said no it depends on what role if it was an ambassadorial role you'd want to see Alan Shearer and Alan Shearer as Warren Barton's role please the list goes on I think it has to, we've got to think not like you know, Manchester United at the minute got like club legends in all sorts of different areas which they don't really need any the best people for the job, and it doesn't matter if they're a club legend or they've never been in Newcastle or the like. As long as they can do the job at the best of their abilities, that's what we want. And the sporting director, I think, is very, very important, and that will make or break where Newcastle might be in January as well. Because if we don't get that right, that could set us back a couple of years. Do you want to change your mind, Liam? I did say no one shorter. <laughs> <laughs> this season, we need to sort the football, and then next season, that's when they start. A lot of their things because the most important thing at the moment is the football. Mm. I couldn't care less if she what Shira is doing now. Like for me, that doesn't matter. I'm not going to get three points. Mm. You're talking about obviously good PR. Move Shira's statue actually on our land because yeah. on council land. Obviously, the, the decorating of the stadium. You talk about the youth development, the women's football. There's loads of stuff you can look at, isn't there? Yeah, I think the women's the women's team has been neglected for so long. Like it. it as soon as there was a Newcastle United women's, it should have been under like Ashley, which obviously probably would have well, probably would have done much better. But I think that's what's going to bring in as well. They're bringing everybody together. I think, well, we all going to be united, but we're, we're not. We seem like we have yeah, all different ideas. Yeah, it seems like we're disunited with the women's team. I mean, that's a video for another day. That's it. It's a short one because we're full on the memory card. If I'm being brutally honest with you, but if you can smash that like, help us out for more of us. We'll see you later.